All right, so the last section in five and in chapter P is called rational expressions with complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction within a fraction. Okay, so the fraction part didn't go away. The factoring part didn't go away. That's also part of what we're going to be doing. So there are two options when you're doing complex fractions or when you're simplifying. Com you can't leave a fraction within a fraction. We have to get rid of it. There are two options to doing that, and I'll show you both. The first option is you're going to find the least common denominator of each fraction separately, the top and the bottom. You're going to simplify the top, and then you're going to simplify the bottom. And then, or no, sorry, the first option is find the least common denominator of all of it. And you're going to multiply everything by that one denominator. So every, like the entire parentheses get the same denominator. And we simplify what we can, and then we finish it out. Option two is find the least common denominator of the numerator and the denominator separately. We treat them as separate fractions. And then at the end, we keep change flip and then simplify. I'm going to show you both options. Both work all the time. You get to choose which one you want to do, okay? So this first one has 1 over x and then 1 over x squared. So option one is look at both denominators, the denominator in the top and the denominator in the bottom, and determine the least common denominator of those, or the least common multiple of x and x squared, which is what? x squared. It's got to be the highest exponent, so x squared. Otherwise, they don't cancel out. And then multiply both fractions by x squared. So I'm doing x squared times 1 over x, and then I'm going to do x squared times 1 over x squared. What happens in my numerator? If this was over 1, what would I do? One of the x's cancel. So my numerator is x over 1, which is just x. Denominator. These both cancel. It's just 1, so this is x. The second way to do this is there's already only one fraction in both the numerator and the denominator. If there wasn't, I would combine them first. I can go straight to keep, change. That division bar is divided, right? So it now becomes multiplication. And then I flip the bottom, x squared over 1, and I cross cancel, and I just get x. So both methods give you the same. Sometimes one is easier over the other. Sometimes they're not. And sometimes it flip-flops which one's easier, to be honest. I tend to go for keep change flip if there's only one fraction in the top and the bottom. You're going to see in a moment there could be two fractions in the top, two fractions in the bottom. But So I tend to do keep change flip if there's only one in each. So for two, I would do the keep change flip method. Keep the top as it is. Change the division bar to multiplication. Flip the second one. What do we see there? Different to two squares. Factor the x squared minus 4 into x plus 2x minus 2. And then the x minus 2s cancel. In the top, I get 1 times x plus 2, which is just x plus 2. And the bottom, it would be 1 times 1. So it's just x plus 2. Questions on that one? All right. You do three. All right, so this one was a lot like the last one, right? If I keep, change, and flip, I factor. This would be x plus 3 and x minus 3. The x minus 3s cancel, and I get 1 over x plus 3. Make sure that x plus 3 stays in the denominator, okay? It's on the bottom. Raise your hand if you get it right. Good. Okay, now it gets a little uglier. So this is where those two options get a little bit closer, and I would say you can kind of piggyback between the two. My, because there are two terms in the top and two terms in the bottom, that's where it changed, right? In the last one, it was just one fraction in the top, one fraction in the bottom. 
I would recommend the keep change flip method with those. These, I have choices. I can either take my just my numerator, find a like denominator, combine them into one, then take my denominator, find a least common denominator, combine them into one, and do keep change flip at the end. Or I can look at all of these and look at all the denominators of all the fractions that are there and find a least common denominator. I'm gonna walk you through both methods. You get to choose which one you want, okay? So the first one, I would separate these out, okay? I look at the top. I want to combine these into one fraction. So 3 would go over 1, and I'd have to multiply both 3 and 1 by what? So it gets the same denominator. X. So this would become 2 over X minus 3X over X, or 2 minus 3X over X. The goal there is to get it to be one fraction. Obviously, it's going to have multiple terms in my numerator. That's fine. I just want it to be one fraction. Then I'm going to do the same with the bottom. So 1 over 1 would become x minus 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1. That becomes x minus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 or x minus 2 over x minus 1. So my fraction is now this. 2 minus 3x over x divided by x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now what? Keep change flip. So I would do 2 minus 3x over x times x minus 1 over x minus 2. Can I cancel anything out? No. So I just multiply straight across. 2 minus 3x times x minus 1 over x times x minus 2. And you can leave it just like that. You don't have to foil it all the way out. Yeah. Say again. Can I do it again? The same method or the other method? Same method. Yep. So numerator, right, I started with just this part. I got to give it a like denominator. So I need the second one to be over x. So I multiply both the top and the bottom by x, and I get here. 2 over x minus 3x over x. Combine them into one fraction, so it's 2 minus 3x over x. And that's my numerator, right? So that's the white part. On the bottom, I need these to be the same. So I change 1 to be x minus 1 over x minus 1. That's this step. Combine my numerators, x minus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1, which is this step, which becomes x minus 2 over x minus 1. Then I keep change flip it. So the top stays 2 minus 3x over x. The division becomes multiplication, and I flip the bottom. Nothing canceled. Sometimes it will cancel, but nothing canceled this time, so it becomes that whole thing. And you don't have to distribute it out. So You're welcome. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first method. The second method, so I'm going to erase this. Actually, I'll just rewrite it. 2, minus, two over x minus 3 over 1 minus 1 over x minus 1. The second method is identify all the denominators everywhere in the fraction. So there's a denominator here and there's a denominator here. Okay? Find the least common multiple of those. So the least common multiple of x and x minus 1 is x times x minus 1. And we're going to multiply all four parts by that. So this is going to get distributed to this. This is going to get distributed to this. This is going to get distributed to this and this to this. So we're distributing it times all of it. So I'd get x times x minus 1 times 2 over x minus x times x minus 1 times 3 over x times x minus 1 times 1 minus x times x minus 1 times 1 over x minus 1. So that least common denominator of all the denominators in the fraction gets multiplied times all the terms. If you've done it correctly, the denominators within the fraction will cancel. This x is going to cancel with this x. This x minus 1 is going to cancel with that x minus 1. 
So the fractions within the fractions are gone. That's the goal of that step. But I still have to multiply this stuff out. So this would be 2 times x minus 1 minus, I'm going to put the 3 in the front, 3x times x minus 1 over x times x minus 1 minus x. I'm going to distribute, so I get 2x minus 2 minus 3x squared plus 3x over x squared minus x minus x. Negative 3x squared minus x minus 2. Wait, this is plus, plus. over x squared minus 2x. Now it looks different, but if I had taken and foiled this out, that would have been my numerator and my denominator would have been 2x squared minus 2x. So you get to choose, like if we get to the point, like if on the test, I'll let you know about format. Homework wise, it's okay to leave this. I'll let you know of test wise, we want you to foil out just so that they'd be the same answer, okay? But realize that that's, they both have the same answer. Even if it's in a different format, doesn't mean it's wrong. Is there ever gonna be a question which you want to do it in like a specific format? No. For me, I bounce back and forth between the two. If the denominators are, Single terms, like let's say this was x, this was x squared, this was x, this was x to the third, I would for sure do it the second method because you're just multiplying everything times x to the third, they cancel, 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 cancel. It's a lot easier. If it's a combination of variables and expressions like x and x minus 1, I typically pick the first one. But you get to choose. Yep. Um, for like the second time you did it, all the answer, would you have to pick up the x? No. The no, it just would put you back to there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I should actually check. I'm going to check web assign real fast. All right. So number five. Okay. Two options. One is simplify the bottom, then keep change flip, right? The second option is multiply everything by five. Either way, it gets rid of it. So if I do the first one, this would have to be x squared over five minus 25 over five. So my denominator becomes x squared minus 25 over five. Okay, this is my denominator. So it's x plus 5 over x squared minus 25 over 5. Now you can keep change flip it. This becomes x plus 5, x minus 5. And the x plus 5s cancel. And I get 5 over x minus 5. If you did it the other way, I would have multiplied everything, which we did all right the first time, I would have multiplied everything by 5. So my numerator is 5 times x plus 5, which you can keep separate for now because we want to simplify that later. The denominator, the first fraction would get multiplied by 5, and the denominators would cancel, so it's x squared. Second one gets multiplied by 5, and it's minus 25. Then I can do the difference of two squares. And the x plus 5s cancel, and I get the same answer. Yep. No, as soon as, because it's X plus five or X minus five, even if it's not in parentheses, those, those parentheses are there. Yeah, you can't cancel just part of it. Only if it was five X. Yeah. Can you do the first um, way again? Yeah, so I found in the bottom, right? We did the bottom first. We found the least common denominator. So I had to take five and make it 25 over five. Then, oh my goodness, my stomach is growling. It's so loud. That's probably on the video. It's so embarrassing. Apparently, did breakfast bar, not enough. Um, then you're going to x squared minus 25 over 5 is the denominator. So that looks like this. x plus 5 over x squared minus 25 over 5. Now we keep change, flip it, factor, cancel. You're welcome. You know. Sure. All right, six. So this is a case where I would probably recommend the keep change flip, okay? Instead of the multiplying by the, but the, if you multiply both the top and the bottom by the x, the x's cancel out and you end up reducing it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But x squared minus one over x 
times x over x minus 1 squared. The x minus 1, x squared minus 1 becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. And then there are two x minus 1, so I cancel out one of them. The x's cancel, and I get an x plus 1 in the top and an x minus 1 in the bottom. Can not be simplified, so it stays like that. Expand and foil it? Oh, heck no. Yeah. I mean, you can. It doesn't make it wrong, but then you got to factor it again at the end. Yeah. Just wasted time. That's all. Good practice, though. But definitely don't need to. Questions on that one? Okay, so this seven, I would say this is one of those where the second method might be easier, right? So I could find a least common denominator in the top, which is x. I could find a least common denominator in the bottom and then keep change flip. Or I can multiply everything by x because it's the same denominator. I don't even have to find a multiple, which means I get 6x times x here. The x is cancel minus 5 over multiply this times x. 1 times x is x. Multiply this times x. It's gone plus 5 and I'm done. So sometimes the simpler denominators, I would say, are easier to do the second method. Multiply everything by the least common denominator, especially if it's the same denominator. Eight is trickier. You can do eight that way. So I'm going to show you both ways on eight. You can do both ways on eight. So this is like the first way. The least common denominator would be a times a plus one. So if I multiply, it's all four fractions that are going to get multiplied by that. A times A plus 1 times A over A plus 1 plus, because there's a plus here, plus A times A plus 1 times 1 over A over A times A plus 1 times this fraction, 1 over A plus, because of this plus, A times A plus 1 times this fraction, 1 over A plus 1. If you've done it correctly, all the secondary denominators should cancel out. So here I got a plus ones cancel, a's cancel, a's cancel, a plus ones cancel. And then you multiply a times a here is a squared. A plus one times one would be a plus one over a plus one times one here is a plus one plus a times one, which is a. So I get in my numerator, a squared plus a plus one, which is prime, don't try to factor that. No terms of one are gonna add up to be one. And then the second one, two a plus one. I'll, how many of you did the other method? Okay, so let's do that. So in my numerator, a over a plus 1 plus 1 over a over 1 over a plus 1 over a plus 1. My numerator, I'm going to separately find the least common denominator here. This would be what over a plus 1 times a? What over a times a plus 1? So I'd have to multiply both of these by a to get that. This becomes a squared. I'd have to multiply both of these by a plus 1. So this becomes a plus one. So my numerator is a squared over a times a plus one plus a plus one over a times a plus one, which becomes a squared plus a plus one all over a times a plus one. Denominator, same process. Give it a like denominator, which would be a times a plus one. So this is going to get multiplied by a plus 1. This is going to get multiplied by a. My denominator is a plus 1 over a times a plus 1 plus, this is a plus back here, plus a times a times a, I mean over a times a plus 1. Or a plus 1 plus a over a times a plus 1. And this becomes 2a plus 1. Now I got to keep change flip it. These cancel. 
and I get the same answer. So again, sometimes one is easier over, over the other. You want to make sure you understand how to do both. My approach is, like I said, if the denominators are simple or they're the same, I definitely go with the first method. If the least common denominator of the numerator would be the same as the denominator, like this case, I would probably also go with the first method. But you get to choose, okay? And again, if you, if you had extra time, which I don't know if that's going to happen on your test, but let's say you had extra time, you could go back and check it using the other method. Questions? Yeah, Richard. Why wouldn't the least common denominator be A? Because for, for top and bottom or for the whole thing? Because A is different from A plus 1. And those are two completely different terms. It's not like A and 2A, right? Those are completely different. If, as soon as you get that plus and minus, it messes everything up. Yep. Can you read something? Uh, let me... can. Why? All of them have a 2 on it. So I could actually factor out a 2 from the top and the bottom and then cancel it out and I get x minus 1 over x plus 1. Or you could leave it in, you don't have to factor it, but every single term is divisible by 2. That's the only way that works. Okay, Every single term would be divisible by 2. If, just, if that was like 2x minus 3 and then 2x plus 2, not going to happen. Would stay that way. It's just because everything can. No, you don't need to. I mean, Canada doesn't make it wrong. Okay. Yeah, you can't cancel it. So it's just an extra step you did. You don't need to do. Yeah. All right. So what would we do for ten? What's the least common denominator? X times x plus three. So let's try. We'll do the method we just did first. X times x plus three. That's going to get multiplied times all three. There's time there's three terms. So the top left, the x plus 3s cancel, and I get x times 1, which is x. The top right, the x's cancel. This is a minus, so it's minus 1 times x plus 3, which would be x plus 3. But that minus is going to go to both. And the denominator... The x is cancel. I get 1 times x plus 3. So this is x plus 3. So the last step here is to distribute that negative to both terms. Those cancel, and I get negative 3 over x plus 3, which cannot be simplified. Yep. Because this negative that's here has to go to everything after it. You're welcome. If you had done them separate, then I would have had to change these to have the denominators of x times x plus 3. So that 1 would have x over x times x plus 3. Oh, I missed the x. Minus 1 times x plus 3 over x times x plus 3. Over 1 over x. I'd get, and my numerator here would get simplified. So this negative would go to both x minus x minus 3 over x times x plus 3. All over this one, 1 over x. This again cancels, and I get negative 3 over x times x plus 3 over 1 over x. Keep change flip, and the x's cancel. Same answer, negative 3 over x plus 3. <clears throat> So if the least common denominator would be different in the top and the bottom, sometimes it stick with the, the second method, but sometimes it doesn't matter, okay? Questions on any of the complex fraction stuff? Okay, let's go over homework from last night. All right, again, remember the odds are on calc chat. Here's the evens. So let me know if there's anything that needs to be reviewed, okay? 40... Should have been x over x plus 3. 
42x squared minus 7x minus 24 over x plus 1 and x plus 4. Danielle. No, it's just an extra step you don't need to do. Yeah. 44, 4x minus 10 over x plus 3, x minus 3. Which one? 44. 2. So factored, this would be x plus 3, x minus 3, right? Because that's the difference of two squares. And then x plus 3. So your least common denominator is x plus 3 and x minus 3. So the first one stays. I don't have to change that one. But the second one, I'd have to change so that it's x plus 3, x minus 3. And it's missing the x minus 3. So I multiply 4 times both. I'd get 4x minus 12 over, and it would be x plus 3, x minus 3. Now the, the denominators are the same, so I combine my numerators together. 2 plus 4x minus 12 over x plus 3x minus 3. And 2 minus 12 would be negative 10 plus 4x, so you could write like that, or you could reverse the order, which was the reverse here, 4x minus 10, same thing. Good, Nusheen. Yeah, okay. You can, but it's not going to cancel. So it doesn't really matter. If you factor it out, it's definitely not wrong. It's just an extra step you don't need to take. If there was a number 2 in the bottom or an even number in the bottom, then you for sure want to cancel because you can. But if it's not going to simplify, it doesn't matter. Kia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because this negative goes to both the 6x and the 4. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Then was 46. 4x plus 1 over x squared minus 1, which you can write as x plus 1x minus 1. doesn't matter there. Sure. So this last fraction is the only one that could get factored, right? So my least common denominator is both x minus 1 and x plus 1. So 2, I'm going to grab this one. 2 over x plus 1 has to become something over x plus 1, x minus 1. This one, 2 over x minus 1 has to become something over x plus 1, x minus 1. The last one is already the right denominator, so I don't have to change it. So this is missing the x minus 1. I'm going to distribute. This is missing the x plus 1. I'm going to distribute. So it's the first fraction, which is this one, the 2x minus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. This sign is positive here. Be really careful with your signs. Plus 2x plus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. Plus this one stayed the same. So now all the denominators are the same. I'm going to add straight across 2x minus 2 plus 2x plus 2 plus 1 all over x plus 1, x minus 1. And then combine your like terms. 2x plus 2x is 4x. Negative 2 and positive 2 actually cancel out. All that's left is plus 1. And your answer could have been left as that. So they foiled it out in the solution, but it could have also been left as x plus 1, x minus 1. Questions? Yeah, Kiara.